Pagna. I manage the Edge newsletter. Today, I'm with Ryan and NJ, and they're here to tell us about a product named Flash Catalyst. Now, you might remember, about 12 months ago, we did a video about a product code named Thermo. Well, Thermo is now Flash Catalyst. So, Ryan, my first question for you is, why did we name it Flash Catalyst? Yep. So, at Max, we reintroduced the Flash platform. And Flash Catalyst is just the latest member of the Flash family. We've got a series of tools, developer and designer tools, that target the Flash platform. So, Flash Catalyst is really targeted at designers who are familiar with the Creative Suite tools, and they want to create application interfaces or interactive content, but they don't want to have to write any code. So, Flash Catalyst is their tool. So, Andrew, you're going to be providing the demo. Uh, what are you going to show us? I have a design that I've uh, created here in Photoshop. Photoshop. It's just pure artwork. I'm going to take that into Flash Catalyst and add interaction to it to make it into a real working design and uh, show off working back and forth with Creative Suite and then show how under the hood this is creating flex code the entire time and you can take that code and directly hand that off at the end to a developer who uses Flex Builder. Great. Well, let's get started. What we're going to do is start with this design that I created in Photoshop. And uh, you can see here that the different pieces of artwork are organized into different layer groups. And we're going to turn those into different interactive widgets in Flash Catalyst later. I also have some hidden content here. So uh, let's go to Flash Catalyst. And I'm going to directly import that Photoshop PSD file in a catalyst, and I'm going to choose to accept the default options here. And Flash Catalyst is actually going to maintain that exact same layer and folder structure that NJ showed you in Photoshop, and what it's importing now, it's actually generating or creating that well-formed Flex MXML code, because we're just working on a Flex project here. That's right. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on auto effects. We'll see how that gets used later. And um, you can see here that on the artboard, we've got all this artwork exactly the same way it was in Photoshop. And we can see the layer structure here is the same. So I'm going to go ahead and drill down here, and I'm going to show this map. So what I want uh, to do first is I want to make it so that the user can click on this little tour finder here and have that slide the map in. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a new page here in my design. And a page is really just a location that the user can go to as they interact with this. So on the first page, I'm not going to show the map. But on the second page, I am going to show the map. So I'm going to turn that on here. And then on the first page, what I actually want to do is I want to make it so that the map starts off to the right and then slides on as we go to the second page so we can create a nice smooth transition there. So I'm going to show the map here, and I'm going to group it just to make it a little easier to work with. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the map on the first page, and I'm just going to drag it all the way off to the right here off the, off the artboard. So I've got it over here, and then I'm going to hide it. So now if we take a look at the Timelines panel, you can see that Flash Catalyst has automatically created um, an, a default move and a fade effect so that if I hit the play button here, we get this nice smooth slide on. Now I want that to be a little bit slower, so I'm just going to grab this move effect and I'm just going to resize it to be one second long. And then again, I'm going to play it, and now it's a little bit smoother. So now I want to make it so that when the user clicks on this mini-map, that we go to that second page. So I'm going to select the artwork for the mini-map, and I'm going to convert it to a button. Now, this is one of the things about Flash Catalyst, is that um, you can create these interactive widgets or components, but they don't look like components that come out of a normal developer toolkit. You can take any freeform artwork and convert it into an interactive component really easily, just like this. So I'm going to take this Tour Finder button, and I'm going to give it a custom interaction, an on-click interaction. Play transition to state, page two. And so now if I go to page two, I have the map here. And what I want to do is I want to make it so that the user has a control where they can zoom in on the map. And I have the artwork for that control over here in Illustrator. Uh, so if we look at the artwork here, you can see in the Layers panel that it's really just a bunch of vectors with some gradients and colors and things. So I'm going to select that artwork, and I'm going to do a copy. And then back in Flash Catalyst, I'm going to paste it in. And again, as we're importing that vector artwork, it's going to remain editable in Catalyst so that all of the gradients and um, lines and paths are preserved. So now I'm going to take that, and I'm going to drag it over here where I want it. And then I'm going to convert it to a vertical scroll bar. Now I have to do a little bit more work because I have to tell Catalyst which part of this artwork is the part that's supposed to slide around and which part is the boundaries for the sliding. So I'm going to go ahead and drop, dive into the scroll bar in this edit in place mode here. And I'm going to go ahead and select the different pieces of artwork that I want to be the sliding part, which is called the thumb. I'm going to convert that to the thumb. And then I'm going to select the background here, and I'm going to identify that as the track. Now, when I converted the uh, artwork for the gradient to a thumb, uh, it actually made it into a button component. 
So you can see here that it has four different states for up, over, down, and disable. These are the different states of a button as you interact with it. Um, but I haven't made any changes to the different states yet, so they all look the same. So it looks pretty good, but I decided after looking at this against this map that I really don't want it to be yellow. I want it to be the same kind of blue as the map when you first see it, and then when you mouse over it, I want it to turn yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and I can actually take that artwork and I can tweak it back in Illustrator CS4. So I'm just going to pop it open here and say edit in Illustrator CS4. And now what you'll see is you can see the artwork here. And it looks the same as it did before, but actually it has a bunch more structure in it now. It has all of the structure of that scroll bar. All the work that I did in uh, Flash Catalyst to set up the scroll bar, make the thumb, make the different states of the thumb, and so on, is preserved when I open it back up in Illustrator. And so I can dive in here, I can select that gradient, and I can go ahead and make it blue. Go ahead and do that for this one too. And let's go ahead and tweak these two little arrows as well, which are yellow, and make those blue. So now I can save this out and I'm going to pop over back into Flash Catalyst, and we're going to take those changes back into Catalyst. What makes this round trip possible is something called FXG. And FXG is a new graphics format that's actually a subset of MXML, and it allows us to do a lot of iterative design on our Flex Flash Catalyst projects because we can round trip between the tools, and like NJ showed you, they maintain that exact same structure from Flash Catalyst. That's right. So when we merge it back into Catalyst here, you can see that now it's blue. And in fact, if I dive in to the scroll bar again, and I dive into the thumb, you can see here that we've got a blue up state and then the other, other states are still yellow. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, now I want to do a little bit more complex interaction. So I'm going to go back to this first page here. And I want to take this featured tour box and I want to turn this into an interactive widget of its own. So I'm going to go ahead and select this content here. And I'm going to group it to make it a little easier to work with. And then I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, some other content we have in here, which is hidden right now, um, which has a little map on it. And I'm going to group that. And I'm going to take that content, and I'm going to go ahead and turn it into a custom component. So we've seen built-in components like buttons and scroll bars, which have their own built-in behavior. But now I can also create a completely custom component that has just the behavior that I want. So I'm going to go ahead and double-click into there. And first, I'm just going to show this um, featured tour information with this text. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new state. So just like we had pages of the whole application, which are different um, places in the application that you can go to, a component can have different states that it goes into as the user interacts with it. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that state. I'm going to make the first state be called front. And I'm going to make the second state be called back. I'll say why in a minute. And then I'm going to turn off the front content here and turn on the back content. OK. So now I have two different states. And again, if we look down here at the Timelines panel, you can see that we built a default sort of crossfade animation for the two. But what I want to do is I actually want to make it more interesting. I want it to actually flip around in three dimensions. So I can use the new 3D effects that are in Flash Player 10. So I'm going to add a rotate 3D effect here. And I'm going to go ahead and set it up so that the front content spins around halfway. And then I'm going to add another one here so that the back content spins around. And then with the timeline here in Flash Catalyst, I can really quickly tweak the timing of all these things so that it has the effect I want. So I want the front content to spin around and fade out, and I want the back content to fade in at the same time, and then I want the back content to spin around. And now if I click play here, you can see that it has a nice 3D effect. So the last thing I have to do is I need to select this little arrow here, and I want to make that into a button that we can click on to go to the other state. And again, it's really easy. I just select the artwork, convert it to a button, Add an on-click interaction, going to the back here. And now I think we should be able to run this. So now I'm actually running the project, and what that's doing under the hood is it's building a Swift. It's building a piece of Flash content, just like all the other uh, parts of the Flash platform, all the other tools build. And uh, we're going to see it in the browser here. So now we have Firefox, and I'm going to click on the arrow. You can see we have that nice 3D effect. And I can click on the tour finder, we get the nice slide on and then I can grab the scroll bar here and slide it around. So we all built that pretty fast from static artwork that we created in Photoshop. So I've been building all this interactivity directly in Flash Catalyst. I haven't been writing any code. But what it's been doing under the hood is, as we said before, it's been creating a well-formed Flex project with MXML code in it. And I can take this code and I can very easily hand it off to a developer by simply saving this as an FXP package, which is just a Flex project that can be opened directly in the next version of Flex Builder. 
So when can I get my hands on Flash Catalyst? We're looking forward to getting community feedback, so we're going to be doing a public beta in early 2009 that'll be available on Adobe Labs. Great. And in the meantime, where can people learn more about Flash Catalyst? Well, you can go to the website at www.adobe.com slash go slash Flash Catalyst and uh, watch that space for information on the upcoming public beta. Great. Well, thanks so much for taking the time to chat with us today and to show us all about Flash Catalyst. Thank you. Thanks, Julie. And that's it. I hope you enjoy this edition of The Edge.